So we're here today with uh, Dr. Semi Diasmos of Dynamic Aero Solutions. Uh, he's the aero designer for the RP968 Time Attack car. And a fun fact is, is that he's also my uh, previous PhD supervisor. Uh, so he taught me a lot of what I know about car aero, so he's obviously a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, so he's going to run us through a few of the flow structures and control systems on the RP968 Aero Kit. So Sammy, would you like to talk about the overall design strategy for the car? Yeah, so RP968 was designed initially trying to maximise the aerodynamic efficiency. And so this is probably a good view to see probably the biggest contributor to that, which is the very big diffuser that this car has, as well as a very large splitter and uh, canard overhangs. So with the front uh, end, there's obviously running something of a dual element wing. Uh, what was the logic behind going for that instead of like a splitter design with a front diffuser? And what's the advantages of doing that over even just a single element area? Yeah, so usually the advantage of doing a two element wing is that it means you can push them a lot harder. As the car gets close to the ground, the wing is prone to having separations and a, and a slot between the two profiles prevents that from happening. But another massive practical advantage is by having an adjustable second element, it means that we can tune the balance of the car to the driver's liking. So with that, is there any reason you chose to go for that strategy instead of, say, just tuning purely through rear wing? The rear wing is also an alternative, but it has a big impact on the drag of the total vehicle and obviously the total speed that the car has. So ideally, we'd like to be able to decouple the two and I believe we have enough information through CFD that we could easily adjust the total downforce on the car and maintain the balance by adjusting both the canards and the rear wing together or just adjust the balance of the car by just only adjusting the front canards. Now, of course, there's one of the few uh, time attack cars running around with a shark fin. Um, and would you like to just talk a little bit about that and why it's there? Yeah, so the, the shark fin is one of our unique features and really it's there to assist with cornering conditions. So by having the shark fin there, it acts like a great big rudder like it would on an aircraft and it helps stabilize the rear of the car through a corner. With the front wing strategy, we have quite a unique end plate system going on there. Can you talk a little bit about what sort of flow control you've been enacting, particularly with that foot plate and the expansion at the lower under front of it? Yeah, so the, the foot plate's our new, one of our new additions to this year's uh, new splitter and, and canards, and the introduction of a raised conical section in the foot plate is there to house one of the probably most critical vortices that you see form on the front splitter of this particular car or the front wing of an open wheel racing car. So you see channels like this frequently on open wheel racing cars because we're always trying to protect that vortex. And then, so you've got two channels, you've got the opening at the front and then you've also got the foot plate. Does the constriction of the foot plate vortex affect the formation of the secondary vortex? The, the two are always interacting. Those two vortices work very closely together and we're trying to house both. So one is the canard rolling over, it's trying to protect the inboard vortex and then the outboard vortex is being protected by the channel in the foot plate. Now moving back a little bit on the car, uh, again very rare on time tag car, we have a set of barge boards. Uh, are these being used to generate vortices for the floor or are they just used to direct out the tyre weight? Yeah, well, they're, they're doing both. They're trying to push the dirty air from the front wheel away from the floor. In the process they generate a vortex and directing that down underneath the floor actually generates local suction gain for the vortex passes. You just find in those barge boards, the side of the floor is quite a thick section I've noticed. Um, fairly squared off with obviously a round and inlet. Uh, what's the logic behind that? Why is there not a thinner plate like you see on some other time attack cars? Um, I, I do believe that having a, a large leading edge radius is, is important to maintain the flow quality underneath the, the car. Um, but the total thickness is probably just a function of time. Um, that's something that we see as a potential future development area. And then as we move back, we obviously have quite an extensive diffuser system, um, starting from just behind the driver's seat. Uh, it's convex concave design, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so how does that behave in terms of your pressure peaks, in terms of uh, how the vortex is getting sucked in from the side of the floor and things like that? So it's really critical for these types of cars to try and have your diffuser start as early as possible and that helps generate your center of pressure closer to the center of gravity of the car. Um, by having that initial rise, you get a suction peak 
and then the shape is quite critical. So you want to have that suction peak, but you also have to be careful not to overdo it because if you overdo it, the flow will separate and then the rest of your diffuser will not perform as well. We have, further down the car, we've obviously got the straights in the diffuser and you'll, I noticed that it's only a two straight design, quite wide. Um, what's the sort of logic behind that versus more straights or even a straight less design as we're starting to see on things like the Asaman Valkyrie? So the, the strakes effectively allow you to divide the diffuser into separate channels and by moving that, those strakes further out, but what we've tried to do is minimize the impact that the rear wheel weight have on the diffuser performance. So we've tried to isolate that into a, a small section and keep the rest of the section quite clean in the center. Then at the very rear of the diffuser we have a bit of a, a kick in from outside on the outside of the tire wheel. This should try and direct some free stream airflow uh, inwards towards the back end of the diffuser or is it just trying to squeeze that tire weight up and out over the top? Really you're trying to keep it away from the diffuser so we want to keep it above the diffuser rather than beside it. But we also want to make sure that all that wheel weight does enter that housing and leave that housing in that controlled manner. Well, thanks heaps, Sammy, for talking so freely about the aerodynamics on this car. It's been really great. I hope the viewers really enjoy it because this sort of knowledge you don't normally get on a daily basis. So anyway, thanks for talking to us uh, and best of luck with getting the car up and running at full speed for Tom. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.